Hello class 7 students how are you all I hope you all are doing well I am Anika Bajaj your science teacher and today we will discuss about your unit number first food so let's start with chapter number first nutrition in plants all living organisms need food to survive food provides the essential nutrients carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins and minerals that are required by the body of the organism to perform various life activities. Organisms like plants can make their own food, but animals including humans cannot make their own food. Animals get their food from plants or other animals that eat plants. Thus, all animals are directly or indirectly dependent on the plants to fulfill their food requirements. Modes of Nutrition the modes of nutrition for different organisms are different. There are mainly two modes of nutrition in plant. Let's discuss about first one. Autotrophic mode of nutrition. The word auto means self and trophs means nutrition. Thus autotrophs means self nutrition. The mode of nutrition in which the organisms makes their own food itself from simple inorganic substances called autotrophic nutrition. Organisms having autotrophic mode of nutrition are called autotrophs. All the green plants and some bacteria are autotrophs. Second one is heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The word hetero means other and trophs means nutrition. Thus heterotrophic means nutrition obtained from others. The mode of nutrition in organism that cannot make their food and dependent on others for their food is called heterotrophic nutrition. Organisms having heterotrophic mode of nutrition are called heterotrophs. Animals and non-green plants are heterotrophs. Autotrophic mode of nutrition in plants. Photosynthesis. The process by which green plants make their food from carbon dioxide and water using energy from the sun is called photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthetic means to make. During the photosynthesis, green plants prepare glucose from carbon dioxide and water. This needs green pigment called chlorophyll which takes energy from sunlight. Glucose is used in the synthesis of carbohydrates, fats, amino acid and proteins. See this equation, carbon dioxide from air and water from soil in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives you glucose and oxygen. Conditions necessary for photosynthesis. First one is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment present in the cell organelle called chloroplast or plastides. The green color of the plant is due to the presence of chlorophyll in them. Chlorophyll is present mostly in the green leaves of plants. Chlorophyll traps the sunlight energy. The energy is used to synthesis food from carbon dioxide and water during the process of photosynthesis. See this diagram. This is a picture of chlorophyll present in green leaf. Next is sunlight. When sunlight falls on chlorophyll molecule, its energy is observed. This energy makes carbon dioxide and water to combine and glucose is formed. Next is carbon dioxide. The green plants take carbon dioxide gas from the air for carrying out photosynthesis. Tiny pores called stomata are present on the surface of the leaves. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. The carbon dioxide gas enters the leaves of the plant through the stomata. See this picture. This is a picture of a closed stomata and this is a picture of an open stomata. Next is water. Water is obtained by the plant from the soil by roots and is transported to the leaves. The vessels that transport water and minerals to the leaves are called xylem vessels. Importance of photosynthesis. First, it is the process by which plants make food. Second, it is the primary source of food for all other living organisms in the world. Third, oxygen released during photosynthesis is required by both 
plants and animals during respiration. Fourth, it helps to maintain the balance between the carbon dioxide and oxygen in the atmosphere. Now let's see the factors affecting photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is affected by a number of environmental factors. These are first light intensity. As the light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increasing almost nearly. At the higher light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis become limiting. Nature of light. The blue and red regions of the visible light are most effective for photosynthesis. If the light of some other color is made to fall on the plants, then the rate of the photosynthesis is decreases. Next is carbon dioxide and water. Poor availability of carbon dioxide and water lowers the extent rate of photosynthesis. Next is temperature. The temperature does not affect the light reaction but affects the dark reaction markedly. The effect of temperature on photosynthesis varies from plant to plant. How plant synthesizes proteins? We have just learned that plant synthesizes carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. Plants can also synthesize other components of food such as proteins and fats. Proteins are nitrogenous substances which contain nitrogen. From where do the plants obtain nitrogen? We know that nitrogen is present in abundance, about 78% in gaseous form in the air. But plants cannot use it in the manner they use carbon dioxide present in the air. Plants need nitrogen in a soluble form. Soil has certain bacteria called rhizobium bacteria which takes atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into water soluble nitrogen components like nitrates and release it into the soil. These nitrates are absorbed by the plants along with water. Other modes of nutrition in plants. Green plants can make their own food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll, a green pigment present in the green leaves and sunlight. So green plants are autotrophic. Plants which do not contain chlorophyll, non-green plants depend on other living organisms for their food. Thus the plants which do not contain food, thus the plants which do not contain chlorophyll are heterotrophs and their mode of nutrition is heterotrophic. Various types of heterotrophic nutrition are described below. Septotrophic nutrition, parasitic nutrition, insectivorous nutrition, and symbiotic nutrition. Septotrophic nutrition the plants which derive their food from the dead and decaying organic matter are called saprophytes or saprophytic or saprotrophs. They release digestive enzymes on the decaying matter or animal excrete. These enzymes break down the complex organic compounds and are absorbed by the saprophytes. Saprophyte plants, mushroom and bread mold. Now let's see an extra mile. Non-green plants such as fungi, certain bacteria, some flowering plants do not contain chlorophyll. Fungi such as bread mold and mushrooms and some bacteria have saprotrophic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition. The mode of nutrition in which an organism derives its ready-made food from the body of other living organism is called parasitic nutrition. The green plants or the animals which provides the food is called the host. The plants which derive their food from the bodies of the host plants and animals are called parasites or parasitic plants. These parasitic plants may be total parasites or partial parasites. The plants which completely depends on the host plant for their food are called total parasite. 
For example, Deodor cascata which means amiable and apodenthes. The plants which make a part of their food themselves by photosynthesis but derive other components such as water and minerals etc of food from the host plant are called partial parasites. The mode of nutrition in some plants like mistletoe is partially parasitic but they made their food themselves and get water and minerals from the host plant. Insectivorous nutrition. The mode of nutrition in which green plants can make their food by photosynthesis but trap and digest insects to meet their nitrogen requirement. These plants grow in nitrogen deficient soil and have devices to trap insects. The example of insectivorous plants are pitcher plant, Venus flytrap, sundew and bladderwort. How does pitcher plant derive its food from insects? Pitcher plants nepethesis has log pitchers like structure hanging from the tip of the leaf. It has a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher for nectar. The lid closes, the insect is trapped and entangled into the hair. The digestive juice is secreted in the pitcher and insect is digested. Symbiotic nutrition. The two plants which live together as a part of the some plants and mutually help each other are called symbionts. Such relationship of mutually helping each other is called symbiosis. The mode of nutrition in lichens is symbiotic. The lichen is made up of a fungus and an alga living together. In lichens, alga, autotroph and fungus, saprotroph depend on one another for their nutritional needs. The fungus supplies water and minerals to the alga. The alga being green and cototroph synthesis is food by photosynthesis and supplied organic food to the fungus. Enriching the nutrients in the soil. Plants constantly need nutrients for their growth. They absorb these nutrients from the soil. However, continually growing crops on the same field makes it deficient in vital nutrients like nitrogen. The soil does not get enough time to replenish and lose nutrients naturally. Therefore, in order to keep the plants healthy, the soil needs to be enriched with these nutrients from time to time. The enrichment of soil can be done in the following ways. First one, adding manures and fertilizers to the soil to increase its fertility. These fertilizers and manures are rich in nitrogen. In addition, these fertilizers contain potassium and phosphorus. Second, by growing leguminous plants like gram and peas in the field, the roots of leguminous plants contain rhizobium bacteria which can be fixed atmospheric nitrogen into a soluble form in the soil. Third, leguminous plants and rhizobium share a symbiotic relationship with each other. Rhizobium cannot make its own food, therefore gets food and shelter from these plants. The bacteria in return provide the plants with nitrogen. Ok class, let's quick revise with Reader's Digest. All living organisms need food to survive. The mode of nutrition in which the organism makes its food itself from simple inorganic substances is called autotrophic nutrition. The mode of nutrition in organisms that cannot make their food and depend on other for their food is called hydrotrophic nutrition. When sunlight falls on a chlorophyll molecule, its energy is absorbed. Ok class, we have done our chapter. Now it's time to take your leave. Bye.